So check it out. This is a Juliet FM AM digital clock radio and flip clock. And it is working as you just saw. But if you listen, it's obscenely noisy. And that is a problem. The dials on this thing, the ones for the volume and the AM and FM, really kind of neat. I'm going to start by removing one, two, three screws and see what I can get access to. Three screws came out, and you can take this off. Here's a first look inside. It's not telling me too much. I might be able to get access by taking these four screws off. It doesn't want to budge, so I'm going to try these two as well. Still doesn't want to budge, so I took this off the side here, that knob, and this knob off of the sleep. That kind of helped, but I can't get this whole thing out. But this now should come off of this metal thing so I can maybe get access to it. I was able to pull it out, and you see the flip clock mechanism, which is fantastic and cool. Turn this on and see if I can figure out if this is, in fact, what's so noisy. So it is noisy, but what exactly is making it noisy? I don't know. So I'm guessing that this is the motor. I'm going to take these screws off and see if I can get to the motor itself. I label things sometimes with a Sharpie, sometimes with stickers if I don't want to have a Sharpie, and then I have them in a tray over here to help me keep track of things. I have the top off. This is the motor. I'm actually gonna turn it back, or plug it back in very carefully. I wanna see if the sound is coming from there or not. So that certainly seems to be where the sound is coming from. What I don't know is how to silence it. Took this piece off the top. This is not exactly what I would think about as a motor. Getting out of my lee here pretty quickly. I'm going to be the first here to admit that I have no clue what I'm doing. But I'm putting some lube and protection. Instrument oil that's used on metal, rubber, and plastics. I've put some oil on this. Took it out. Put oil here and on the underside. I also put some uh, lubricant between this, the motor thing, and this metal plate. Put two screws back in. I'm going to try it, see if it seems any quieter. When I plugged it in, it, I thought it wasn't working. I thought I'd broken it. But actually, if you see, it's moving super slowly and super quietly. Listen. Isn't that beautiful? I guess I will try to reassemble it and see if uh, it actually works. This light is not very bright, and I vaguely consider switching it out. But it's got a certain cool look to it, so I'll probably leave it alone. So what's kind of interesting is these little silver prongs are holding the cards in place. The motor's moving as slowly, comes down, and then it lets the card fall. You can see there's actually small amounts of damage on both sides where those prongs are. You wonder if that actually throws off the accuracy of the clock at all. So this is just show it's working. It's 1014. It just switched to 1015. Radio. First day. So it's working pretty well. So I think this is screwed up. Some of the cards seem to be missing. Yeah, that does not come after 40. What the? Yeah, so that's supposed to be 49. It should be flipping to 50 right about now. But it's not. So somehow there must be a card missing because it's taking two minutes to switch to 51. Something is screwed up. This is not good. So what I think the issue is, I think there's little cards. I'm going to call them cards, the little black flipper things uh, missing. So right now it's 930. The next time should be 931. So that doesn't say 931, but let's pretend this card was here. That would be 31. And now imagine this flipping next time around, and it would be 32. Because when it comes down, it's 33. So I really think there's either cards stuck together or missing. The question is, how could those cards possibly be missing? I opened it up already. It wasn't like a bunch of cards fell out. Looks like I'm going to need to open this thing back up and see if I can figure out this mystery. Got it open, and indeed, there are cards missing. So there's nothing stuck together. So there's 35. There should be a top of a 36 here and a bottom of a 37. And you can see right here, there's an open socket. If I flip 37, there's no open socket. So there's cards missing. It's bizarre. Here's another example. Obviously the top of the 41 is missing, the bottom of the 42 is missing. And you can see there that hole where the card is missing. I searched in vain. There's no lost cards in here anywhere. Which leads me to, what do I do with this thing? By my estimation, there's six cards missing. You're going to have to have a sense of humor if you would buy this thing.
So theoretically, this could still keep accurate time. Typically, there's two clicks between each number. So 17 to 18, 2, 2. This is again, so now 2 does not go, so I need to do 4. So it's given the right number of clicks to change to the next minute. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. So do you want to buy a clock that looks like this every once in a while, and you have to decide whether it's 11.53 or 11.54? So I think I'm just going to sell this as a positive and say this is a clock that six times an hour is going to challenge your sense of reality with these crazy numbers. Rather than a negative, you know, have some fun with it. So I think that's what I'm going to do because at the end of the day, it is kind of cool. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing. And remember, thumbs up never hurt nobody. Comments and thoughts are always appreciated.